wait, you've got to be kidding me. Let's get this untwisted. Hello, hello. Welcome back. I feel kind of like an announcer today. Not like last week, but truly because when I started recording, I don't know, maybe a few months ago, I had to get a new microphone. And this one is so superior to the one I was using before. If you've been a listener from the beginning, you've probably even hopefully noticed the shift in audio. And in my not so humble opinion at the moment, uh, I think it's just gotten completely so, so, so much better. But it looks like one of those microphones that Ryan Seacrest would be holding on American Idol, or I'm just, I don't know, performing in front of an auditorium of millions and millions of fans, people. So for whatever reason, you know, it comes with this kind of rinky dink stand. It's fine. It's not great, but it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to make sure that it doesn't move and skirt around on this little tiny table that I use while I'm podcasting. So not too long ago, I decided to try, I decided to try holding it and it makes me feel a little bit uh, obnoxious, a little bit like, you know, I don't know, an MC at a real concert or famous show or something, but it is kind of empowering. So I'm going to go with it for today. Um, and I'm recording in the morning, which I rarely ever do, which I think could maybe give me a little bit of a different type of energy. We'll see how the show goes. But lately I've been doing like 10 p.m., sometimes midnight recordings, and that's weird and it's very late, but sometimes it works very well for me. So we have a Disneyland cup right here to commemorate the moment. This is the last mug that I purchased right before I left for college. So if you, if you aren't familiar, I grew up in Southern California. I grew up maybe 20 minutes from Disneyland and Southern California residents have, or at least they used to, I don't think it's the same anymore. They used to have crazy good discounts for residents. Like you could go at a really, really good discounted price uh, in comparison to any other tourists or visitors so that, you know, you could have access to the parks and it wouldn't be outrageously expensive for you to visit more often. So for as long as I could remember, I was an annual pass holder, which sounds like so archaic in my mind now because I haven't been an AP as we call ourselves. I haven't been an AP in a very long time, but this was my last mug that I purchased on my last trip to Disneyland before I left for Gonzaga. And on the inside, I'll show you right here, it says, wish I was there. Uh, so anytime I get very homesick, I'd have this mug with me at my very unorganized, very clutter filled room at Gonzaga. And I just look at this mug and I'd be like, oh, well, I wish I was there. I wish I was with my best friends going on all the rides, having the most fun. And I'm not a total Disney fanatic, but I also love and adore Disney with all my heart. Like it's kind of the combo wombo deal. <laughs> I don't know why Keith and I always say combo wombo. <laughs> I think we like SpongeBob too much. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It just made me really, really happy to have this. And it was kind of like a good little farewell present. I will throw up some pictures of what my dorm room looked like my freshman year at Gonzaga. I don't know if I've ever told this story, but when I went to Gonzaga, obviously, you know, you get paired up with most of the time you get paired up with a random person. Sometimes you can request to have roommates. And my roommate, I had kind of known like through a friend of a friend before going into Gonzaga and we requested to live with one another just because she didn't know too many people. I didn't know too many people actually scratch that. She probably knew a whole bunch of people. She played soccer at Gonzaga. So she was, she was pretty dang cool. And I just wanted a friend. So I wanted to be able to room with her. And also she was the most perfect, amazing roommate ever. Jody, if you're somehow watching this, I love you. <laughs> I don't think you're watching at all. But anyways, uh, our room was kind of like what one might call horribly ugly. It was probably the oldest dorm on campus. I think they called them residence halls, not dorms. That was like a, maybe a Gonzaga thing or a Jesuit thing. But in their mind, a dorm is a place where you sleep, but a residence hall is a place where you cultivate community. So I was an ambassador, can you tell? So in the residence hall, we just had 
the nastiest looking walls. They weren't that nasty, but they were not that great either. You could barely stick anything on them because it was like faded painted brick, I think, or stucco, something weird. So I would either have to hammer in a tack, which you weren't supposed to do. You had to use command strips and whatnot or I would use painter's tape and it would fall down like every other day. It was beyond frustrating. But for whatever flipping reason, my freshman year, I think because I hated the room so much and the furniture was so ugly and it was just so dated, like literally it had to have been made, I don't even know, just forever ago, but not the pretty type of dated, the bad type of dated. <laughs> I think I hated the room so much that I wanted to just cover it as much as possible, if anything would actually stick to the walls, of course. But my poor roommate, I mean, I don't know how she put up with me without like, I don't know, giving me a hint that whatever I was doing was just far too much. But I had Ferris Bueller poster on the wall. I had a Star Wars poster on the wall and not like, you know, mini, like those big, huge movie sized posters, those were on my wall for whatever reason. I had pictures of like every friend I'd ever met in my life. I don't know, make myself look like I was cooler or something in some big, huge collage. I had just photographs galore on my desk slash dresser combo, whatever you call those things in school. Uh, just like so many unnecessary knickknacks and the thought of all of that clutter now in my mind, quite honestly, makes me want to just, it's just, it doesn't look good. It's tacky. It really is. Excuse me. I'm sure you don't want to hear my coffee slurp, but it's just too good. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, I hated the way that my room looked. So I tried to just decorate obsessively and it looked horrible. And I mean, nothing corresponded, nothing matched. I had this bright purple and navy blue bread spread, bread spread, a bread spread from Urban Outfitters on my bed uh at the time it was so cool you know i thought it was so trendy like i never shopped at urban outfitters and here i am getting my bed spread for them for for college wow okay so maybe morning is not the time to record because clearly i can't pronounce words yeah it was it was a lot and you know i look back very fondly at that time but also just so concerningly college is just a weird time in general. I mean, I remember just kind of thinking, I didn't know who I was, clearly. I mean, I was graduating from high school, just like any 18 year old is, you know, and you think, oh, I'm going to go off to this school and I'm gonna have so much fun. And I know exactly who I am. But truly, I was just trying so hard to fit into maybe the PNW vibe. I think that was honestly, like my biggest regret I suppose looking back was that I wasn't more confident in just Taylor and who I am and my style and whatnot. I tried very very hard to make sure that I was going to wear the same things that people in Washington wore which was Birkenstocks and um, Patagonias etc. Like I went on a mini shopping spree even Chacos like I've never worn Chacos in my life now I purchased them just because of Gonzaga which is so funny because that was never my style, but I thought I had to reinvent myself as this Washingtonian wannabe, I guess, when I went to school. But funny story about the Birkenstocks, of course, now they're one of my all time, all time favorite brands and shoes and just they are so me now. And maybe that's because I've realized how much I love them or just how comfortable they are. And, you know, they're not they're not always out here trying to make the fashion statement. That's not what they were designed for. That's not are aesthetic but they serve a good purpose and golly gee do i love them but i purchased i believe two pairs right before i went to gonzaga which is a lot of money in the u.s they're double the money that they are than in germany when i studied abroad oh god not this again when i studied abroad uh when i went to oktoberfest i intentionally wanted to buy a pair in munich because i had heard they're literally half the price so I think I want to say I paid 50 some euros for the ones that I purchased in Munich. When you buy them here, they're usually about 100, which is just ridiculous, probably even more. But anyways, I, of course, just like wanted to fit in so stinking badly. So I buy myself two pairs of Birkenstocks and what I just failed to even research, recognize, learn, whatever, was that 
it takes a while, just like often many shoes do to break them in. So for example, you know, you get a brand new pair of vans, of heels, of running shoes, workout shoes, whatever. You need to actually kind of mold them to your foot. Birkenstocks are kind of the same. Actually, a little bit more even, oh my gosh, <laughs> a little bit more even, even more elevated is what I'm trying to say. This is, this is going swimmingly. It takes a while for them to mold to your foot because truly after a while, your foot is becomes indented in the shoe. So you put your shoe on after owning them for a year or two, it molds right perfectly to what your foot looks like. It's like a little blueprint, a little pillow wrapped around your foot. Now, in the beginning, not the same case. So I didn't know that. And of course I wanted to save my brand new shoes for my brand new first day of school, my brand new school, my brand new state, my brand new dorm, everything, residence hall, sorry. So I wear them for the first week or so. And I had the absolute worst blisters of my entire life. So bad to the point that I bought the Birkenstocks that have two thick straps, just two. It's just a simple slide on shoe. You have two straps on each foot. I had such bad blisters that I put on four band-aids on each foot every single time I left my house because I wanted so badly to be wearing the shoes that I thought everybody else was wearing. And I wanted them so badly to fit my foot and for me to just be comfortable and fine with it that I dealt with it and I just basically would bleed like my feet were just bleeding from these open blisters that would just get ri oh my ugh! it's gross to even talk about it's nasty but that's how badly i was just i don't know like wanting to fit in or just wanting to do what other people did or something it's it's so silly to think back on now it's funny because of course like i mentioned i love birkenstocks but that was the price i suppose i was quote unquote willing to pay to blend in or whatever. I think I remember texting my mom and asking her to send me blister band-aids because I couldn't find them anywhere at any of the Spokane stores, probably because maybe everybody else was dealing with Birkenstock blisters. I don't know, but it was, it was pathetic looking back. So you know what? If the moral of the story that I just rambled on about for 10 minutes is that, you know, you need to be yourself and stick with what you know. And if what you know is shoes that you love, make sure that you break them in before you go off to college and make a fool of yourself in front of people that you've never met before in your life. Great first impression, I might add. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. Uh, I think lately I've been like trying to find my groove again, if that makes sense. Like that's my summarized life update in one concise sentence. I have a really hard time sticking to routines consistently, if that makes sense. I, I always say this and it's, it breaks my heart every time I admit it out loud, but the older I get, the more I realize how inherently lazy I am. And I'm not, I'm not not driven. I think I just am very comfortable, like being comfortable. Like if you told me for the rest of my life, I could you know, work out every single day. I could then afterwards just kind of like sit around, go on TikTok, watch TV shows, watch Love Island, um, listen to podcasts, like play around. I do that every single day and I wouldn't even question it. But at the same time, there's also this other like angel devil scenario in my body where I want so badly to just have that laziness and relaxing. But then there's the other half of me that's like, no, like you want this in life. You want to do this. You're, you are driven, determined, blah, 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 all the characteristics. So I'm constantly like battling extraordinarily laziness and extraordinary drivenness, I suppose. But it's so hard for me to keep going, I guess. I mean, I speak to this, what I hope to be often, but motivation is always fleeting. You know, you can't rely on motivation to get things done, be that a workout routine, be that hanging out with your friends and consistently keeping up with them if that's something that you struggle with. Even just like learning a new skill, you can't always rely on being motivated to get yourself there. You have to build habits and build a structure for yourself that you can fall back on when your motivation isn't there anymore. 
So I'm in like the phase two of that, or I'm needing to be in the phase two of that, which is where is my structure? When I don't want to film a video, when I'm feeling uncreative, uninspired, I'm just feeling lazy, I don't want to sit at my desk for 14 hours and edit, I need something that's going to help like push me and motivate me. And what I realized is I need some way, some way to feel like there is a system supporting me in regards to my work structure. And it's something I dream up in my mind, but I even have a hard time articulating and I don't even know if it's a thing already. And I always ask for recommendations, but I don't even know if it's, it's not that it's not worth it, but I think I'm so particular on how I'd like to be organized or how I imagine my dream world of Taylor being the most organized she's ever been. It's hard to ask for suggestions or help when I can't even articulate what it is that I want the most. But let me try to explain. I feel like even when I was at my jobs or my previous internships, whatever, I always had a hard time like walking into something very blindly. I wanted a structure to rely on. Like, let's say I got uh, an email from a client. I've never seen a type of request like that before. Like it's something I've just never heard of. I want to be able to open up a binder or open up a structured word document or something that has like what to do when this happens. These are backup ideas when you feel like you need to be inspired. These are creators that really empower you and make you feel inspired that you should watch when you're feeling down below. It's it's kind of like my brain is you know all over the place in a really good way but I don't know how to put that into some type of daily planner I guess or even just some type of like network system software something and I've tried what feels like everyone under the book like I've tried the whole route of um oh my golly what's that one really popular one that people were promoting a bunch on TikTok oh I'm not gonna remember oh my gosh it was one that was extraordinarily hard to build from the ground up, but once you actually did it, it was very, very helpful. Like you could build your whole life off of this one software. I think I struggle even taking the initiative or having like the correct idea on how to build that in the first place. So I almost wanna find a software that's already set up for me to plug in the information that I need to be plugged in, but also, not stress myself out about having to, I don't know, reorganize something in a way that's not going to work for me. I, in a way, I feel like I'm totally just talking gibberish, like nothing's making sense out of my brain, but I want it so badly. And I feel like once I finally have whatever that is, like whatever structure, software, planning system that I feel like I need, like just intensely need, then I'll be the most successful and most productive tailor that I've ever been in my life. And I actually ended up reaching out to a friend of mine, fellow creator, fellow podcaster, actually, Jen Lauren. You should absolutely check out her content. She's so, like, in a very good way, I feel like I think of her as my complete opposite. Like, I think of myself as maybe a little bit more passive. Like, I don't know how to stand up for myself well enough. And sometimes I'm just a little bit too like softly nice, I suppose. And she's an amazingly nice and kind and beautiful person. But I feel like I also respect how she holds herself and how she carries herself. And she just kind of does the darn thing, you know? And I love that. I think it's really, really cool. But she recently posted a video on her channel talking about how and why she decided to quit her nine to five job. And she lives in New York City. So even just like thinking of that alone, like living in New York City, quitting your main source of income, how is that feasible? How is that possible? And she does have a lot of like social media presence as well. So I mean, she does Instagram ads and YouTube and her podcasts and everything, but still she was trying to just punch all of these numbers to make sure that she wasn't miserable anymore at her nine to five and figuring out a way to make her new schedule work for her and pretty much she was determined to do like 900 different mini jobs to make up for that one miserable paycheck of the job that she didn't like I suppose so I watched that video and I was just 
amazed by her. I thought it was so impressive and so cool. And I mean, even in my circumstance, I was furloughed from my job. Like it wasn't that I quit intentionally. They, they quit me or whatever, you know, not exactly my fault. It was because of COVID, but still like I didn't have the um, courage, I suppose, to do it myself. But in her case, she worked it out that she didn't actually fully quit her job. If I'm remembering correctly, she told them, hey, I love this work, but I, I feel very overwhelmed. And these are the clients that I like to work for. So can I go part time just working for the clients that I love? And somehow she negotiated it and it worked out. And I just think that is so dang cool and kind of inspiring for somebody like me who just always thinks of myself as oh, I could never do that. Like, that's really, really cool. So I reached out to her because I was just, I don't know, I felt like really touched and empowered by seeing her story. And I also asked her, what is your secret? Like, how are you now doing your part-time job? Plus she also works part-time at a fitness studio. She does WAG or um, Rover, whatever the type of dog walking apps are. She also has a podcast. She also does Instagram. She also does her YouTube channel maybe other things that I'm not mentioning. I mean, she has a boyfriend, so she's got a relationship. She's got a social life, like blah, 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 blah. And I was just incredibly amazed by her. And I just wanted to know, like, what was your secret to being so organized that you felt like this was a better route for you than having one specific role, job, etc. And of course, like, you know, that one role also has a long to-do list within itself as well. But I... I don't know, I just felt lost myself and I wanted to turn to her for help. And she told me that she's actually been thinking about possibly doing some sort of client assistance like this for a really long time to help lost puppies, lost souls like myself, kind of find their way again and be able to set up these systems to be the most productive selves they can be. So I'm gonna keep you updated on that because we're meeting next week Zoom, of course. I can't fly to New York. Not yet. Sadly. Soon. Maybe. I don't know. Jen, invite me over. <laughs> We're meeting next week and I'm going to talk to her basically all about like what she thinks is best. I think she told me that she uses Evernote, which I've also tried before, but maybe I need to give it another go. Uh, I also want to say she told me that she was thinking about making a video about how she stays organized as a content creator. So even if you're not interested in getting some sort of one-on-one -on -one help from her, like client perspective. She does a lot of good videos on organization and productivity and just staying uh, productive or organized in general. And she also said Google, Google Calendar is her like best, best, best friend. And I think that also needs to be something I'm better about. I use Google Calendar, but not as religiously as maybe I should. And you know what's funny is like I'm such a pen and paper kind of gal, but I prefer having something on my phone as well. Like I want it to be transferred immediately, if that's even possible. Like I want it to be on paper, but at the same time, if I have a planner on my desk like I do right now, and if I'm not actively telling myself to open it up and to look through it, then sometimes I forget to open it up. But I'm always on my phone, you know? Like this is, this is so pathetic to admit out loud. Truly, but uh, I need it. And I'm tired of just saying, oh, I'm gonna be more productive when I get this thing. I'm just gonna do it. And I'm gonna hopefully uh, hire her and have her help me. And we're gonna figure this out. So Taylor can be a lot more Taylor, you know? And she can finally get this office updated like she keeps talking about. I think I've decided what I want right here. I'm going to keep it a little bit of a surprise, but honestly, if you're a podcast watcher, you probably could guess what it is that I want, but I'll make it fun. I'll make it twisty oriented, you know, or maybe I'll, I'll put it over here because I want this down too. I just, I think if you look at something like this or any of the things that I have on my wall, not the pillow. I love the pillow. Do you say pillow or pillow? Uh, I think of this kind of wall art as very much college tailor like this is what maybe some of my room elements looked like like just this sort of vibe but then also throw in like pinks and blues and yellows and oranges and blah 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 because I was so chaotic in the organization space but alas 
Um, and also, a big little, not even big little, big huge update that I need to just vent about. <sighs> if you follow me on Instagram, or maybe if you've just been listening or watching or whatever for a while, you may or may not know that I am a huge fan of a certain guilty pleasure that is called Love Island. And it is something I have no shame in. I have no problem admitting this. It's kind of funny to be honest, but I'm not like a reality TV junkie whatsoever. I've definitely dabbled, you know, like I grew up with my sisters watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians or like just different e-shows. Um, of course, The Bachelor, Bachelorette, I've watched, but I'm not even like that big into Paradise, Bachelor in Paradise. So, like, yes, I like reality TV, Shark Tank, does that count? I guess so. <laughs> but it's not been like my absolute biggest obsession ever. Like I don't watch any of those Bravo shows, like Real Housewives, none of it. It's just never been my thing. So it was a, a wild card for me to fall in love with something like Love Island and to not instantly kind of be turned off by it because normally I think that wouldn't even be my type of personality. Like that's just not, that's not me. But I think because I think of myself as so contrasting to most of the characters on the show, truly they are characters, uh, I think is what almost draws me in even more. Like it's just so fascinating that that's, that, 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 I don't know, it just exists. Like the whole show, the whole premise is just fascinating. I think the concept of Love Island is genius in regards to how a television production is made, like where right in this moment, if you're watching this like in real time, there are people in Hawaii. Why did I say that so weird? There are people in Hawaii that are in the US Love Island. There's people in Spain that are at the villa in the UK right now as we're speaking. Like this show was not filmed four months ago. It happens probably one or two nights before we actually see what they did those two nights ago. You know, like everything is in real time, five days a week or six days a week, right? Something wild. Every single night for six weeks long. And there's the social media component where people are just constantly giving their opinions. And it's just genius in my mind. I think it's so fantastic. The music is fantastic. The outfits, the editing, the quality production. Like I just, I love it. And maybe that's why, because I think the, the TV element of it is so fascinating, but this is not the real problem that I came here to vent about because Clearly I'm getting too excited. I don't have any way to watch either show live. I don't have cable and I also don't live in the United Kingdom. So for Taylor to be keeping up with Love Island, it has been such a little heartache. <laughs> it's so pathetic. Last summer, I, I watched Love Island USA on CBS. That's the program or the channel that it premieres on here. So last summer I bought CBS All Access for at least a few months or so because I wanted to be able to watch the episodes. But this time around, I'm like, I'm trying to save money. Like I don't have cable, but I also don't want to buy another subscription service. Like what do I do? So I've been trying to figure out different ways to watch the show, but nothing is as reliant as just having a subscription or just living in the country that it's premiering in. And that's just kind of like what I've been trying to face and come to terms with, I guess. I think what I've realized is I just need to download CBS All Access again. And I just have to be patient with Love Island UK if I don't want to do anything illegal, which I don't and I won't. <laughs> so I'm just like patiently trying to wait. My current strategy was I was watching Love Island US on, I don't know why it sounds so weird to say that. I was watching Love Island USA on YouTube because they premiered the first three episodes on YouTube. And I was like, that's fantastic. They're gonna show the whole season on YouTube. Now I don't think that's the case because first of all, USA came out a few weeks after UK started. So I thought I wasn't even that far behind, but it's been at least a week or two since they've updated the YouTube channel and no new episodes, so scratch that, we're back to square one. Then uh, Hulu would be the backup option for USA. 
and you can't watch it on Hulu unless you have Hulu TV, Hulu Live TV or something. So I'm like, okay, great, that's just cable. Like that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. I don't wanna pay $70, thank you Hulu. Then with the UK, my first option was of course Hulu because that's where I would watch the previous seasons because that's where they had always been but they didn't start releasing Hulu episodes until two weeks after the show premiered. And truly they're kind of doing it, I guess the smartest way, and maybe the US will do this too in, in due time, I don't know. But they started releasing every single episode one day at a time, just like it probably would have premiered in the UK, starting on I think the 12th or the 13th of July. So pretty much two weeks after the show started, they premiered all of the episodes on Hulu so, so you could stream them if you had Hulu. So I hate being two weeks behind. Like that is just what is annoying me. It's not a problem, it, but it also is. <laughs> like it's not that big of a deal, but I'm also bothered by it. So I'm just trying to like not get myself like, too upset or too annoyed, but I also like wanna be in the heat of the conversations. Like I hate listening to a, a podcast and all of a sudden they're like recapping it or something and I didn't realize. And I'm like skipping, fast forwarding really quickly so I don't learn who went home because I'm behind and I hate being behind. It's like not my thing. So I'm gonna try and get around that as best as I can but I'll keep you posted if there's another way to do it. I, I appreciate everybody who has sent me various links to different UK sites and whatnot. I've tried all of them. None of them work unless I have a VPN. And that's also something I'm just not in the business of wanting to buy. So if you realize the problem is, is I don't want to spend money. That, that is truly just the only issue here. I'm just trying to avoid spending anything, but clearly that's also not working. So, um, hello, one plus one equals two, I suppose. So that's that on that. Um, but also on kind of like a little bit of a Love Island note, um, my last little life update for you all and a reason I probably need to wrap this up quite quickly is that I'm going to a bachelorette party this weekend. That's not exactly a Love Island segue, but I was thinking like fun, booze, girls, hanging out. We're going to be sitting out the pool, so bikinis, beach towels, sunscreen. Oh my gosh, I have to pack sunscreen. Okay, I'm reminding myself right now. Taylor? pack sunscreen. I'm leaving in like 30 minutes. So this was like a little quick podcast vent up life update right now. But I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous. I know I think four people going, I want to say maybe there's something like 10, maybe 11, 12, something like that. I actually don't know. And I think maybe because I don't know all of the details that also makes me nor more nervous but it's also my first bachelorette party ever, like ever, <laughs> which uh, is just a little bit intimidating because I don't know what to expect. And I don't know if this is just a US thing or if this is all over or I don't know, but uh, I'm only starting to reach the age where people I know or people I've known like my whole life or whatever are starting to get married. So the whole bridal showers, bachelorette parties, bachelor parties, etc., weddings, everything is very, very new to me. And I have older sisters, so I have a little bit of what I hope to be a little bit of insight, but at the same time, it's different and it changes with every year, every generation, like things are constantly being, I don't know, evolved on how people like to celebrate. Like the new thing, at least right now, or maybe it's been the past few years, is for people to do like big trips to Austin or Nashville or Scottsdale, like some sort of big weekend. Of course, a lot of the guys often go to Vegas. Uh, that's like a very typical bachelor party, very expensive one, but sadly a very typical one. And of course that's, you know, maybe three, four, five days, perhaps five days seems like too long in Vegas. So we're being honest, but for the girls, it's really dependent. And, uh, I'm, I would say I'm not lucky cause it's not my decision, but this bachelor party is just like kind of around the corner from us. So we're not doing like some big trip. I don't have to fly anywhere or anything, which is at least nice because you don't have to worry about airfare, but things, you know, just definitely start to add up. Even when you're thinking that your bride and groom are doing the bare minimum, like they're not even asking too much of you, but you still are like, oh my gosh, well, there's just, there's so many things to do and there's so many things to get and presents and supplies and packing and it's, it's a lot. And I didn't even know anything about certain quote unquote 
traditions that a lot of brides like to do or a lot of parties, etc. And it, like I said, it changes all the darn time. Like something I recently learned was, let's say you're gonna go to Nashville or something. The bride will normally wear like, let's say a white t-shirt, like somebody will order, maybe the maid of honor, they'll order matching t-shirts for the whole group, which I think is like fairly well known. That's a normal quote unquote ish thing to do. Quote unquote, I just keep saying that. Uh, that's like, you know, a fairly common thing, but uh, it changes like with every city, I think with every group, sometimes you can write just like bride and then like bride squad or whatever on the shirts, I don't know. But oftentimes I think the bride is in white and the other people in the party are in black t-shirts, black tanks, whatever. Or maybe they're just in matching something. I've seen people do wigs before, like all of the bridesmaids wear wigs or everybody at the bachelorette party wears wigs. I've seen um, just like different sashes, like fun sunglasses, hats, you name it, like it's probably been done before. But I didn't know that this was even a thing. So when I'm packing for this bachelorette party weekend, I was like, trying to make sure I wasn't gonna forget anything because I'm nervous I'm gonna be the one person who doesn't bring like one black shirt or one certain type of dress to wear. Like we're going on a winery but it's gonna be extraordinarily hot. So her maid of honor said, hey, don't wear black, wear like f florals, pink florals. And I was like, what do you mean don't wear black? Like, why would I have worn black to begin with? Like I, I missed the memo. So I was just like sort of thinking like, I just get a little bit nervous when I don't know every single detail because I don't wanna be the sole one that ruins the fun. I don't wanna be the, the party sucker. Every party has a pooper, that's why we invited you. Like, don't want that to be me, you know? So I, I'm a little bit nervous of that, of course, because you know, you just nervous, you just get nervous that you would be the one to ruin some magical or special tradition, of course. But also I just, I definitely have a lot of social anxiety and it makes me uneasy, I suppose, when I'm around people I just haven't met before. But it's the weirdest thing, and I think I've spoke about this before, spoke about this, uh, but when I'm around people, I, for the most part, can kind of relax a bit or I can ease up, especially over time, but it's always the buildup for me that is the absolute worst, like just the thought of it or the thought of being uh, uncomfortable or having anxiety around people I don't know makes me nervous. But I also think of myself as in some ways or in a lot of ways very extroverted so I feel like sometimes I can just like throw on a personality I guess like not in a fake way I hope but just more like I can show up and be happy even though I'm like secretly kind of freaking out on the inside which is why I used to think of myself as I probably still do as an extroverted introvert where I'm definitely more outgoing in some ways but I also feel like I'm very introverted in so many other ways like it's that combo wombo deal you know so i think i just get nervous about maybe being around people or being excluded for sure and my number one uh strength if we're listening to a strengths finder quiz that i took in college which i i think is pretty true the quiz not like my actual results well, no, I take that back. My results are true, but I'm, I'm not trying to brag is what I'm saying. My number one strength, according to that quiz, was inclusivity or just me being an includer. So because of that, I am always cognizant of maybe like who's not being fully invited into um, a circle if people are just standing around or maybe who hasn't had the chance to talk yet. And I think innately, I kind of try to welcome in new voices or ask them their opinion or I don't know it just kind of feels like that's something I've worked really hard on being better at because it's something I hate myself which is kind of funny because I think if you think about at least in this sense some of my strengths or anybody's strengths I wonder if they derive from points of insecurity with myself like I wonder if I have a number one strength of inclusivity because I so badly don't want to be excluded myself, if that makes sense. So it's kind of funny to think about it in that way. Uh, I think my second strength, again, according to Strengths Finder, it's a fantastic quiz, you should take it. I wanna say it costs money. I took it for a class, but 
it was totally worth it. It taught me a lot about myself. My second one was positivity. And I wonder also if that's because I worry so much that I have negative thoughts in my head that I don't want people to think I'm negative. So I try very hard to also be outwardly positive. And none of these things are um, cognizant. Like, I, I guess I, I know that I am, but I'm not intentionally trying to be like, I must be positive, blah, blah, blah. I must operate as positive. I think, it, I mean, it comes naturally, I guess. But it is, I don't know, I've never thought about it until this moment. I wonder if those two are connected. Who knows? But um, please kindly wish me luck. I'm, I know it'll be so much fun. And just like with anything bridal or wedding related, like it is not about me. It's not about any of the bachelorettes or anybody at the party, like it is only about the bride. So I don't care if I'm having a miserable time, I will throw a smile on, I will do anything to make my girl happy. Like it is all about her. She's one of my closest friends, so I'm extremely excited to celebrate her. But maybe just like a good rule of thumb, also like a good little closing note, never make something like that about yourself. Like put all of your petty problems to the side, even if somebody is bothering you or they're being just a total and complete betch, um, sock it. Like, Close your mouth, talk about it later to somebody that's not the bride. Do not throw a fit, like do not be that person. It is not about you. And you never ever wanna make that situation so self-absorbed. It just, no, like this is what they want. This is what they wanna do, make it for them. Do not make anything about yourself, especially in regards to the weddings. That's my two cents for today. Uh, I need some more coffee and I need to eat some yogurt before I venture off to the beautiful city of Chelan. <laughs> So I love you all so, so, so much. Thank you so much for listening. I think this was just like a little bit of a fun life update episode, but I really liked it. It was an easy, fun, flowy convo for us. Well, I hope that you felt so too. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked it, please give it a five-star review in the Apple Store. Um, follow me on Spotify or subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching right now. And if you are, hey, I love you. A little wink for you. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Uh, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.